So this is the video number three for chapter two, subtracting rational numbers. And that's what we're going to be doing in this section. So make sure you copy down the target. And remember that rational numbers just means it could be positives or negatives, fractions, decimals, integers, all of those. So we're combining what we know about how to add and subtract and multiply and divide decimals and fractions, and then applying the rules where we might see some negatives thrown in. So, all right, it goes with section 2.3 in your book. Let's get started. So the first section or the first type of problem you might see is just subtracting decimals, which you probably did in at farms, if not before that. And subtracting decimals wouldn't be that bad, but now you notice that I'm taking away a larger number. So you can either leave it as um, 12.8 and take away 21.6, or you can rewrite it like we did in chapter one as 12.8 plus a negative 21.6 because subtracting 21.6 would make it get smaller on the number line and so will adding a negative 21.6 will make it go left the value is going to be getting smaller so because i am adding these and I have one positive number and one negative number, I'm going to need to find the difference between them. So I'm going to set it up and just find the difference between 21.6 and 12.8 and work that out. So I have to borrow, as they say, from the, the ones place. So I can actually do the subtraction. 16 minus 8 is 8. Bring the decimal point down. 0 minus 12, 2 I can't do. Or you can think of this as 20 minus 12. So I will get 8.8 .8 as my final answer. And right here, the negative was bigger. So I have negative 8.8. .8. If I want to think about that on a number line, just to double check my answer, make sure it makes sense. I'm starting at, let's put zero here. I'm starting at 12.8. So maybe here's 10, here's 12.8. And taking 21.6 away. I'm hopping this way, 21.6, and I would end up at negative 8.8. .8. So we know our answer makes sense. Let's go on to the practice. So here's two for you to try. I'm going to point out, make sure you notice the signs. Right, we have some negatives, we're subtracting and starting with negatives. So if it gets a little confusing, rewrite it as add the opposite. Um, and then think through, should I be getting bigger? Should I be getting smaller? Would my number be increasing or decreasing from where I start? So pause it here and try these, and then we'll talk through the answers. So pause now. So before I show you the final answer, I wanted to show you what I did in thinking about it and rewriting these. Um, for the first one, I had negative 8.4. I could rewrite it as adding negative 6.7. Now I can see I have negatives plus more negatives, and we can think that through and realize we're going to come up with a big, bigger negative number. And then in number five, I rewrote this minus a negative or subtracting a negative. If you remember the dance or just add the opposite, we would get negative 20.5 plus 20.5. So pause it again, and then we'll check the final answers. So in the first one, I knew they had to combine to make a bigger negative. So I found the sum, added them up, got 15.1. But it's negative combined with more negatives to make a bigger negative answer. So I got negative 15.1. And then in number five, negative 20.5 plus 20.5. Those would cancel out and just make zero. So let's check the next example. This one is subtracting with fractions. Again, there's going to be negatives thrown in, so we have to remember what we know about fractions and also what we know about our integer rules when we have some negatives involved. So if I subtract fractions, first thing I got to think about is getting them as improper fractions. So I'll do that first. Remember, multiply the denominator times the whole number, so that would be 28 plus one more, so negative 29 sevenths minus negative 6 sevenths. And then I need to check and make sure I have common denominators, which I do. I have sevens here and sevens here, so I'm good to go. Then I would think through my, look at all the signs, okay? Minus a negative or subtracting a negative, if we do the dance or change it to add the opposite, is just adding. So I have negative 29 sevenths plus 6 sevenths. And if we think back to our rules with adding, I'm going to check and see I have a negative here 
and a positive here. I'm adding different signs, so I need to find the difference between them. So the difference between 29 sevenths and 6 sevenths, just looking at the numerators, right? 29 minus 6 would leave me with 23 sevenths. And then I just have to pick the sign of whichever one was larger. Since this negative was larger to begin with, my final answer is negative 23 sevenths. You can leave it like that or turn it back into a mixed number. Let's see. 7 would fit in 3 times and I have 2 sevenths left over. Still negative. All right, on the next slide, you get a chance to practice these. Remember what you know about fractions and what we have to remember for our rules with negatives. So go ahead, set them up, pause, and try them, and then come back and check. I want to bring you back partway through just to check what we have so far before we get to the final answers. In number two, I changed them into improper fractions, and then I also got them written with common denominators. Those are your first two steps before we even do the math. Again, in number three, change them to improper fractions, then wrote them with common denominators. Those are all things we covered in the fraction unit. Now I'm going to keep going and get to the final answer. So pause again from here, if you're not that far yet, before you check the answers. Okay, in number two here, um, once I had common denominators, I rewrote it as add the opposite. So instead of subtracting, I just said uh, it would be like adding negative 5 sixths. And then I saw that I had negative 20 and negative 5, and those would combine to make negative 25 sixths, which is negative 4 and 1 sixth. And then in number 3, I already got common denominators. Again, I can rewrite that subtraction as adding the opposite, or adding a negative 21 fourths. So now 18 fourths plus a negative 21 fourths, overall would leave me with negative three-fourths. So that's my answer there. Our last example is um, where it says to find the distance between two numbers on the number line. And this one they give you a picture, but they may not always give you a picture. So you might have to set up your own number line and, and kind of picture yourself where the numbers are. So they want the distance between ne um, negative three and one-fourth and positive 2 and 3 fourths. And the way to think about these, especially if I have one of them in the negatives and one of them in the positives, I've got to go this, let me draw that better, I've got to go this whole distance to 0 plus again this whole extra distance to that negative number. So I really have to find how far to 0, how far to 0, and add these two distances together to get the whole distance between them. So that means I've gone 2 and 3 fourths right here, and I've gone back 3 and 1 fourth towards the negatives, so i got to add those up. Again, turn them into improper fractions first. So that would be this one, let's see, would be, let me change colors. This would be 12, 13 fourths. And this one would be 8, 9, 10, 11 fourths. They already have common denominators. So 13 plus 11, when I add these numerators up, 13 plus 11 gives me 24 fourths, and that's equal to 6. So the entire distance from here to here was 6. That's my answer. All right, on the next slide, you get to try one. And this one doesn't have a picture, but draw yourself a number line, put them on there, and then think about how you'd find that distance. So how about draw the number line and label it, and then we'll check that part, and then you can pause again to find the distance between them. So pause now. So on my number line, I have all numbers that are actually in the negatives. So I put zero here, and all my negative numbers will be that, to the left of, of zero. Um, Whenever you set up a number line, make sure you're counting by equal intervals. So I had to count by like negative fives, negative five, negative 10, negative 15. Then you can put the numbers you want in where they go. So then I put a dot here for negative seven and a half in between negative five and negative 10, and here for negative 15.3. Now I can tell that I'm looking for the distance between them. I'm looking for how far is this distance between them. Well, to find that, I'm just going to have to subtract between these two numbers. So go ahead, finish the problem, find that distance between negative 15.3 and negative 7.5, and then we'll check. So pause now. 
So I've come over here and I did the work. I just found the difference between the two numbers and I got 7.8. And you may be thinking, well, should that be positive or negative? But if it's a distance between two points, it has to be positive. They're 7.8 apart. So it's just 7.8. Uh, that's it for this.